hello there. So guess what, I'm out on location again and I'm on a good one this time. So I'm on a full salmon safari to the River Tay. We travelled up last night uh, and arrived here in this top secret location and spent a very peaceful night ready for three days of fishing on the Tay. I'm at Kinnaird, so I've got two days on Lower Kinnaird and then a day on Upper Kinnaird. I've had this one booked for a while and I've been really looking forward to it. Obviously my search for a spring has been barren this year so far and I had hoped to have squeezed one out before I came up here. Uh, but I'm not putting any pressure on myself, I'm just here for a nice day, uh, for a nice few days. I've got a, three days off work so I'm very much looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to fishing in a new river, especially one as illustrious as the Tay. So let's go and check it out. So here I'm getting my first glimpse of the river and obviously it's very wide but it's not as huge I guess as it could be. As far as I'm aware I wouldn't imagine that it's particularly high the, the river level. I haven't purposefully, I haven't been following the levels. Heron Cottage, Osprey Cottage, Kingfisher Cottage. Mm. Where did you call uh, the dog, uh, Rob? Carla. Carla. Right. Like she's, uh, she's a good fishing companion, but she's getting a bit long in the tooth now. She's, mm -hmm. she's not going on 12. Yep. And um, she likes to be, uh, she likes to be near me. Ever, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a breed of a dog, is it? She's a German Shepherd. It is a German. Uh, yeah. I had a German Shepherd for a number of years. But it was a kind of lighter, a kind of coated one. I had. They're uh, very intense animals, aren't they? Oh, yeah. It's the relationship is very strong between yeah. a man and his German yeah, yeah. Shepherd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It must have been good at fishing then, was it? it must have... very, very much so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They seem to have a good temperament when they're... They, they do. They, they have a very good temperament. They put that into their kind of breeding. You now it's just kind of built in. Yeah. You don't need to do anything. It's all there. But a lot of people uh, regard them as a kind of fierce type dog because the horses uh, work with uh, This one's the opposite. I think... I think as a breed characteristic you do get the odd one that's extremely timid. Yeah, yeah. And this is her. <laughs> She's throwing her own shadow, yeah. Go down the van. I'll let Rob choose what she wants. Just, just stay on. Um, well, I would go to the top and just naturally. So if, if yeah, you yeah, if yeah. you don't mind doing that, and there we go. Yeah. That. As I say, Rob, what you're doing from here is just right round that kind of gravelly type corner. You'll see the few uh, kind of saplings that I'm referring to. That's your start, and then slow but sure, work it all the way down. For yourself, uh, next starting kind of halfway down the kind of granite yeah. blocks it kind of uh, just where it goes into the bigger blocks yeah. have a good morning right thank you very much you good luck Nick Check this out for a piece of water. Here we are, the River Tay. Hello, River Tay. Nice to meet you. I'll give you a drink later on, don't worry, but I don't have my hip glass with me. So look at that for a setting. Swallows over the water. Oh, it's beautiful. And this pool that I've just walked up, it, I think this is a guy pool. It's just a long pool with what looks like quite a deeper channel on the far bank. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that bit of like slack water there. I like the look of this. Like. So I've got a um, fast sinking tip on and a woolly gun. Shoot, Carla, you stay there. Good girl, stay, stay, stay. And we're just going to uh, do our best here.
no wind at all, which is pretty nice. Martin the Gilly was good fun. Very um, business-like, but uh, seems to be quite a character as well. And I did appreciate his dress sense. What a place to fish, look at that for a view. Gonna have to get a bit of line out here, I think. In all of the excitement, I forgot my glasses and my hat. Get out, get out. Don't start this, you. Get out the bloody water. Get out, out the water. Good girl, stay there, good girl. Yeah. Now I'm pleased I put new studs in my wading boots last night because this is a hell of a current in here. It's fairly whipping through. So I'm right into the tail of the pool now in my first run through. I haven't touched anything so far. Casting wise it's been going okay other than a small period of about 10 minutes where I lost my rhythm a bit. See we've got it back now. Come on, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Will do. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we've lunched. We've lunched well uh, and enjoyed the entertainment of Martin Nagilly, who's quite an entertaining chap. Anyway, we're here in the meetings pool. And this is where we're going to be this afternoon. And uh, that's Nick, one of the other rods. We're going to follow him down 
and um, hopefully catch a salmon. So talk in the uh, the fishing hut is that salmon are very thin on the ground, but well, somebody's got to get one. Tell you what, it feels like a sexy piece of fly water. This mind. Doesn't it look nice? I think I can hear the osprey, but I can't see it. Alright, so I've just seen my first fish jump. It's nice to see a fish because it was starting to feel a little bit lifeless. Yeah, I think I'm going to try a different fly. We'll just have a little fly change and we'll go back to this fish here because it does look very promising here. And it is, like I say, nice to have seen a fish. Try something purple because I'm not sure that my orange fly is showing up too much in this water. I'm gonna give it one more cast, then we'll put one of Scotland's purple cone head tubes on. Come on, fishy! I want fishy! I want fishy! Will we get a fish? Will we get a fish? Come on. So here we are, we're into the evening session now, time for a little snack and then get back in. So we're going to fish Mike's run and then we're going to go back into the meetings pool and fish that down all the way to the bottom. That's where I did see one fish. It's been pretty hard going so far, it's quite hard work covering such a big river. It's like a physical workout. So this is Mike's run. And when I was presented with choices of where I could fish this evening, I just asked the ghillie, I'm like, look, if you were fishing tonight, mate, where would you be fishing? And he's one of the rare ghillies, it seems, that seems to be able to fish a lot. So far, he's had a 17 pounder amongst numerous fish. So, um, fair play, Martin, the ghillie's obviously a dab hand with the old fishing rod. 
I wish I was a dab behind the wheel. I shouldn't put. I've left Carla behind because she's uh, she's had enough. It does feel nice this stretch. It's a lovely. I mean, the whole thing is lovely fly water. It's it's an absolute pleasure to fish. To tell you the truth, even for a ham-fisted amateur like me. I can feel a fish, like I can feel a fish. It's such a nice piece of water. As you can see, there's a right funnel there up at the neck, so it's definitely going to encourage fish to lie underneath here. Necesita una poca de gracia, una poca de gracia por mí, por ti, por mí, por ti. La la bamba, la la bamba. Oh God, this does feel fishy as. Oh, come on. All we need is a few fish in the river. This would be like the perfect ambush place for fish if there was any here. I'm getting a lot of knots and coils in my running line. I think it's because I'm, I'm fishing a lot longer line than I really ever normally would. So I'm having to sort of deal with all the running line. I know somebody suggested I coil it into my hand. And I normally try and hang it on like different fingers, but I haven't 100% perfected that technique. It's so bloody nice, like, I mean, what a lovely flow and pace. This is just such lovely fly water. All right, how's my fly looking? I have to keep doing fly checks when I'm using tubes because I must admit I'm often guilty of wrapping the fly around the, the line, like. And then you fish through a section, you fish really well, and then you go and check your fly and you wonder how long it's been like that. There you go, we've got a bloody knot in it. Wind knot. So I'm about 20 yards upstream of what I think is going to be the spot. Come on. Let's have a spring off that rock. Right, nice big mend in it so it's nice and slow, just sweep past. And come on, grab the fly. Grab the fly. I've got a little sort of cascady shrimp tube thing on. It's um it's about three quarters of an inch with some brass in it. Feels like the right fly. Come on. Come on. Come on, River T. Come on, River T. Okay, this next cast covers it. So come on, this has got to be the one. It's got to be a good cast. Got 
Could be a good cast. Mm, wasn't the greatest cast, but it wasn't the worst. It might not have done any harm. Landed a long way short. Let's have a Okay, that's better. Wind's up now, though. Right, this is the one. Come on, come on. I'm probably crouched out here, though. Like, come on. That's gone over, that's perfect, that, that's absolutely perfect, come on. Come on, there's got to be a fishy in front of that, there has to be. So uh, there were some very serious um, salmon fishers around today, I did notice. So there was like guides with their clients and stuff like that. Um, people sort of well known in the salmon fishing world. And I have to say the, the mood was somewhat doom and gloom in the um, the fishing hut about lunchtime. It seems to be like everybody's quite upset about the fact that there's no fish. Uh, and they seem to think it's a terrible year. Which it does seem to be quite a slow start of the year for sure. But um, you know, I, I'm a modern day salmon fisherman. I um, I've got lower expectations than I think these guys have. So when people start mentioning like catching 12 fish in a session and stuff like that, well, I don't know if those days are going to be um, are going to be around for too much longer. But like I say, my my expectations are a lot lower than that. So you know, I've seen a fish that makes me quite happy, and I've not cast like an arsehole, and that also makes me quite happy. So yeah, I'm I'm quite happy with my day's performance to be honest. I didn't completely embarrass myself and um you know i saw a fish so you know it's it's something um maybe tomorrow i might even touch a fish who knows so it does sort of make sense to me i mean there are environmental changes afoot at the moment and we are getting towards like a, a period of drier summers and it only makes sense that like if, if a salmon you know a salmon is a creature of evolution and evolution is not stupid so if the summers are going to be really dry why would a salmon want to enter the river in spring and then spend all summer and autumn in a completely dry river um, it makes sense that they're going to, the, the runs are going to sort of naturally shift towards being later on. And I noticed from studying the, the figures from the Tyne for the last, for last year, and obviously the back end run was tremendous after the dry spell that we had. So it's sort of made up for the terrible spring. So maybe that's just the way things are now. Maybe in Britain, just the, the salmon run's going to be a lot later. Um, who knows?
So, good morning, it's day two of my campaign. Hopefully today's the day, but if not, at least it looks like it's gonna be a nice day for fishing. Looks, this point overcast and there's no wind and it's very still and it's lovely actually. So I got talking last night with somebody who has a bit of land just a couple of miles away and very kindly they offered to let me stay on it tonight. Um, so we're gonna move lodgings this evening, which is gonna be nice. Ah. Oh. But now we need to get ready for another hard day on the salmon. Yeah, Carla, breakfast. So we've got our instructions for this morning and we're off to um, Ferry Pool, I think. And junction pool, perhaps. Just sit and wonder why, babe. Cause I'm on the dark side of the road. When your rooster crows at the break of dawn, look out your window and I'll be gone. You're the reason I'm traveling on. Don't think twice, it's alright. <laughs> Ah, look what a beautiful morning it is. All is right with the world on days like this. Like, I've decided I don't care about salmon anymore. I just like to stand in rivers. Luckily for me, 
because it seems there aren't too many salmon around these days. What a perfect day to be in Scotland. This is much preferable to being stuck inside the bakery making bread for other people. Turn the camera back on because there's a big salmon just splashed over there. It was, oh, it was like a whale. So I'm not, I'm not up to it yet. I'm like 20 yards short. It's on a line with that sort of bridgey thing. But what a tremendous splash it was. It wasn't a splash, it was a, a splosh. Like a big, deep, heavy splosh. Feels like I'm covering it well. Stay there, you. No reason for you to be in the water. Get out, stay there. Oh, it's gonna take now because I've got a, a, a loop in my running line. Carla, get out the water. Oh, it's bound to take right now. Tell you what, it would be good crack to hook into a massive fish, <laughs> like a really big wobber, just to see what it's like. Oh, I came all around there, lovely that. Oh, come on, I know there are some fish in there, and I know one of them is big in. I think I'm going to try a new technique, like a couple of people have suggested trying a sunray shadow and I have got some. So I think I will, once I fish down, oh fuck, no, I think casts. Once I fish down to the end here, I'm going to, I'm going to chuck a sunray shadow over the top and see what happens. I sure would like to hook that big fish, like just, just to see, because it just, what a splash it made. I think that would be a different experience hooking into something like that. So the instructions were to cast it across, strip it back and hang on. Let's hope so, eh?
There we go. Right. Straight, 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 straight. Come on. I'm hanging on. Seems like we don't want this uh, Sunday shadow the same as they don't want the woody gun or anything else that I've offered. <laughs> So after a quick banana, I'm in the ferry pool. And this is to be the second pool of my morning fishing. I like the way you get allocated your pools in the morning, it seems very formal. I feel like I should be staying in a, a bed and breakfast or a small hotel that serves toast and marmalade for breakfast. I think I've hooked the bottom here. I would love it to be one of those cases where the bottom, where you put the bottom in, the bottom starts to move. So, um, yeah, the bottom's just uh, released me. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we may have a large lump of cabbage on here. Oh, it's a twig. Great, it's my first tear twig. Well, at least I know my fly's getting down. Oh, why couldn't you be a fish and not a twig? So I realised that I've been very, very remiss in terms of my treatment of the river. I didn't even make any offerings or anything, so no wonder I haven't caught a salmon. It's no, it's no wonder. Like, how ungentlemanly is that? I basically, I entered the river today without even buying her a drink first. There you go. Cheers. So in terms of action, there's not much going on. Down there there's a flock of seagulls, and I think they're feeding on March browns that are coming off, along with a few trout that are sporadically rising, but other than that, there's absolutely no sign of any action. Like It was about 200 yards down that way that I saw the salmon, the two rising salmon this morning. Um, but other than that, like, I haven't had a sign of a, a sniff of a fish. And when you don't see them, you start to look at the water and you think, God, that's a lot of water to cover, like, you know, the chances of actually meeting a fish are, are one in a million. God, I haven't caught a fish yet. No. God, I says because I'm a shit fisherman. Oh, well, you're probably right. Anyway, it's time to stop for lunch soon, so now that I've made my offerings to the river, I'll, uh, I'll make a toast to the spirit of the salmon. Cheers, spirit of the salmon. Yes to you. Give me a fish, man. Come on. I'm clutching at straws here.
I like that you fish every night, like. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Oh, aye. The wife right, doesn't agree with that one, but it kind of pleases everyone. Well, that's the way that I look at it. <laughs> Downstream side from here, uh, Robert. So, what you've got is you've got the pace and the neck of uh, the kind of ash pool. I would like for you to go in a wee bit higher up, it might involve just a wee bit of stripping in, and then you've got some nice deep currents to work with. In effect, miss this wee bit out because yeah. it's a bit of an eddy. So you've got a big pipe below us, mm -hmm. and then you're starting uh, scrambling along uh, the kind of rock edge from there and working your way down. Uh, but you're going to make a wee start up at the top here. Absolutely. Going back uh, kind of numbers of years to give you an idea of what we can get in spades, the main river used to cut down that side. Right. It changed overnight and now it all comes down in this way. Put that down to all these big uh, sporadic gravel banks. Yeah. Is she okay to jump down from that height? Yeah, it should be fine. Come on. Come on then. This way. Come on. Come on. As you can see, I've just got a nice gentle pace on this inside. Yeah. And uh, nobody's obviously covered this uh, this morning, so it's a fresh piece of uh, water for you. Uh, yeah, again, what I like to focus on here, you've got a croy off the inside, and you can see that kick coming off it. Likely spot just right off the nose of the croy there. And then, as you know, just work it all the way through. Right, I shall do my best. Good thank on you. It. And we'll get the wee text for me later on for the safety. Yeah, we will do. Right, well, thank you, man. Okie dokie, thank you. So I've got a lot of water to get through this afternoon and this evening, which is nice. I'm sort of it's nice that I've got so much to go at, like I certainly can't complain. So I've got the gold body, the gold-bodied willy going on. That seems to be the um, locals' fly of choice. There's a, as like I said yesterday, there's a lot of like fishing guides and very professional salmon people here. And there's like a party of um, a young American party here for the whole Scottish salmon fishing experience. And it must be really difficult to actually cater for that because. I know, obviously the fish are few and far between, or they're certainly more, the less frequent spring visitors, so these people are going to turn up with expectations, and obviously you're trying to sell them the day, not just, not the actual fish, it's, it's the whole experience. That, that is really deep in there, by the way. I feel like I have to pull my fly 20,000 leagues up there. 
So he said along here, um, I'm not, I forget where it was, I probably should have remembered, but there's a gravel bar and then a drop off, on the other side of the drop off, it's 37 feet deep. So I'll be okay about going in there. I'll give that one a miss. Going back down here again. entire run here this looks tremendous I mean that's just so inviting ah oh, what a pleasure to fish this right Carla get back I have to see my first ever beaver so I'm a bit astounded the fact that there's actually wild beavers in Scotland I didn't realize they had reintroduced them or let them go or whatever happened but apparently there's like 20 pairs on this, this section of river. And uh, yeah, to me, like a beaver is an exotic animal. So I've just seen them with my own eyes. Oh, that's it, that's going in here. Oh, stay here. Oh, I think we'll have two minutes before we get back at it. Oh, oh that's nice to sit down. Nagger. I've got miles to go as well. I've got loads of water to cover tonight. Oh, what a, what a great pool though. I think it's time for a refreshment. I've got a lot of pockets. Keep out the water, Carla. Carla, get out. Out. Get up here. Out the water. Get out. Here. Get up. You have some real water and I'll have some Coca Cola. Mmm. Ah, oh, that's nice. So I heard a quote somewhere, and I think it was attributed to John Girac. And it pretty much went like, cast into steel head is like calling God on the telephone. I think the premise is that you know, it rings and it rings and it rings and nobody ever answers. But the one time that there is an answer, it's going to be the mystical experience. And I kind of feel a little bit like that. I feel like I've been ringing God on the telephone all afternoon. Are you there? Oh, come on, get your time back sorted. 
Come on, get your timing back. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I am knackered, I want a salmon for all this effort that I have made. I've had to break up the emergency rocky road, that's how exhausted I am. What's happened? All of the fishing's taken that out of me, I've lost my senses. I'm, I was made a cup of tea and I must have left the gas on underneath the glass lid and it's just exploded. Oh, that's going to take a lot of clearing up. Oh, what a disaster. So anyway, we've got the guy pool left. That's that's all, all I can do, I can do any more. That's enough. That's going to take a while to fish it properly anyway. It's about half past six now. So I'll give that a good couple of hours and then that's me done for the day. I'm knackered like, I'm honestly I'm absolutely knackered. This is a huge stretch of water and I've done my best to try and cover as much as I can. I thought I might have seen a few more fish man, I must admit. But they just don't seem to be around in numbers. So here we go. Last attempt for today. It's getting a bit windy and a bit grim looking. Ah, we're gonna have some of this and just grin and bear it and just fish it and then at least I can see I fished the whole pool. I've got stones in my boots as well but I can't be bothered to take them out. I can't believe I've done that to the cooker. What a buffoon. Carla, what an idiot I am. Carla agrees. Go on, in you go. You're gonna stay here this time, I think. I think you've had enough fishing. Right, I'll be two hours, Carla, I reckon. Maybe an hour and three quarters. Oh, right. Suit and boot once again. Once more onto the breach, Carla. Once more onto the breach. Oh. If I hook a fish on, I'm, I'm probably not going to know what to do with it. If I hook a fish and lose it, I'll be so devastated. I think I'll just have to stop fishing. Yeah, I had to wrap up a bit here, so I've got the hood up, I've got the goggles on, I've got the hat pulled right down. But let's do it. Spirit of the Salmon, are you out there? Hear my calls, answer my prayers, reveal thine self. Oh, Spirit of the Salmon, hear my calls for thee. 
appear before me and reveal thine secrets. O Spirit of the Salmon, reveal thine self. Come on. O Spirit of the Salmon, show thy hand or thy fin or thy tail. It's quite nice actually because I'm not trying to cast the other bank, I'm just trying to do smooth controlled casts and just relax and enjoy it. <laughs> it's so easy sometimes, honestly it's ridiculous. The, the amount of force you have to actually put in, it's, it's way, way less than you think. I think I might have picked up some sort of turd. Oh. Yeah, it's quite relaxing just fishing. My expectations are zero at the moment. I probably could be fishing here, but I don't know. Nothing seems to be in a taken mood. I think maybe that's all I can do is just give up. The Buddha did say do nothing. It's in the, the unhappiness is in is in the aspiration towards attaining things. So I just accept the fact that I'm not going to catch a fish, and that's all cool. Which it is all cool anyway, because it's been a lovely day. And at least I'm fishing some great water, which is very... Well, it's quite a privilege, really. It's, a, it's some fast and fantastic fly water to fish, so there's always that. So Carla and I are staying in a new place tonight. We've been invited very kindly to stay on some private property. Uh, we've been assured we're going to be left for our own devices. It's amazing how many doors YouTube opens like. Long may it continue. Check this thing out. I got this for Christmas from my sister a couple of years ago. Now, how does it work? Uh -huh. Goes like that. Right, anyway, while that gets going, we'll need to get into the beer because it's been a hard day and I've still got cold beers and I think they're well earned. Ooh. Check this out. Oh. I know I said I was going to save this till I caught my Springer, but I might never catch a Springer. That's what it feels like, so live in the moment, live for the day. So again, thank you to whoever sent me the cigars. <laughs> whoever is the random cigar sender, and you know what it is? Like, as far as I can tell, they're, they're very good cigars, so thank you again. I might not have met a salmon today in the river, but you know, there's more to life. It's not too bad, is it really? I'm like, I'm, I'm quite literally spoiled for comforts here, mate. That's the good thing about having a van. You can take all, all your comforts with you. Mm. Here's to the Springer that I haven't caught yet. Cheers, Springers. To the Spirit of the Salmon. friend, be nice to uh, meet you again, and to the tea, and then most importantly of all, to all the spring fishermen, to all the mad bastards out there who've been out since February the 1st, or even January in some cases, hunting down these springers, fair play to your lads and lasses, because I tell you what it is, it's a, it's a serious business like, and it's, it's hardcore, so Cheers, and I hope that everybody out there eventually gets hold of one. I know it seems that so far catches haven't been fantastic across the country, so uh, to those that have had them, the fairest of play, and to
to all all of us still waiting keep on in there guys just keep on going I'd also like to make a toast to all of those of you out there who actually can't get to go fishing anymore for whatever reason that must suck so you know I hope you I hope you will enjoy coming along with people like me you know those of us who can and those who can go fishing just always remember to be thankful because it's it's a pleasure that you know if you are denied I think you would really regret it I know that if I couldn't go fishing anymore I would be gutted yeah I'm thankful for the opportunity to be frustrated and uh, and frozen and to sustain the occasional flea in the ear uh, and um, to have to walk miles with boots that are like collapsing and now now my wading boots let, let stones in <laughs> so periodically I've just got I've got stones in my shoes now just to make it even even more uncomfortable and I've got ingrown toenails <laughs> so it's absolutely wading is just miserable in the cold water especially it's miserable I need some new boots You know what, I think I'm going to be able to pull this off. <laughs> so I had worried that I was a little bit too drunk to be able to actually cook this um, steak on this particular grill because I've only been burning a few little bits of pallet. Um, uh, but luckily for me anyway, I like my steak really rare and this is going to be more than enough cooked. So uh, I thought I was, I was going to have to take it inside and cook it on the gas. Mm. Just tremendous. Here we go. I'm sorry to any vegans out there. You might want to look away. We've got uh, horseradish. Perfect. I looked for mustard and then I found horseradish. I also had mustard, but I would rather have had horseradish. I feel like I'm eating a celebratory meal for um for something that hasn't that hasn't actually happened. I'm celebrating the search itself. Hmm. Oh, what is that? Oh. oh, that's good. Oh, come on. Mm. Mm. Oh, happy days. I hope you can hear the juices. Mm. Oh, that's tremendous. No, that's absolutely tremendous. So, happy days. Mm. Nice. English asparagus. I've got asparagus and horseradish. Very nice. I could have quite happily had this a bit rarer. Mm. Oh, 
Oh, it's nice though. Bloody hell, it's nice. So, here's the best part, the fat. How does that taste? Mmm. Oh, barbecue fat. Oh, that was tasty. This is the type of food that's required to sustain the day of seaweed salmon fishing. I must have, I must have burned God knows how many calories today. And without this level of, of powerful sustenance, and I would surely, I would surely faint. Okay, so it's day three, here we go. It's feeling a lot more spring-like today. Like this is, this is a bit more like it. I'm gonna suffer a bit more today. So we're starting in Mike's run, this is the tunnel. And then we're gonna join the meeting pool. And then uh, fish down again. To some of the water we fished yesterday, just because it's, it's probably the most likely place that there's gonna be a fish on the beat. So I'm happy to fish it again and then this afternoon I'm going to have a cast in a different place and then I'll be on the road this evening so this is it last chance saloon I don't have any expectations and um, yeah, well, I'm sort of I'm over thinking I'm going to catch a spring I like okay we've got the purple demon on here look this is gonna do the business. So this is the junction pool. And then we've got the meetings pool to do, and then it'll be lunchtime. And then maybe another cast this afternoon, but I'm certainly not gonna be staying late today. I need, I need to get home and my, um, my morale is not at its highest. Hello there, do you bring news of a massive run of fish? Sorry? Do you bring news of a massive run of fish? Not, no. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me you've been seeing plenty of fish here. <laughs> Ian's been seeing a couple uh, further down river. Has he? So can I work him my way up to you? Oh well, no I haven't seen anything personally. Oh, oh quiet for you. Oh, quiet for me. Oh, it's a bit cooler today. Oh, much cooler. <laughs> yeah. It was positively balmy yesterday and I think it was uh, yeah, it was. It uh, pushes into a false uh, sense of security. I think so. I always work uh, in any kind of, uh, kind of year. Mm -hmm. I've never cast a foot until May is out. Right, yo. Otherwise, then they park your long drones away until the end of May. Right. <laughs> So what's on the business end there, uh, Robert? At the moment, it, it has been a, a good body, a body willy good, yes. as yeah, advised yeah. by your uh, gentleman yesterday. Mm -hmm. And now I've just got a purple cone head thing oh, on. Good. I mean, f fly selection. Um, I mean, so, some of my people pay too much attention to yeah, that one. Yeah, I'm standing this. Okay. 
if you're going to individual thing, you know, it's what you have uh, confidence you, on. You hear stories of someone taking crisp packets. Oh, all sorts. <laughs> you know? All sorts. Yeah, yeah. If they want it, they'll have it. If they don't, they're not. They just... Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. But it was good fun trying for them. <laughs> did so, you get a cast last night or not? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did you get them? Nothing going for me either. Last night I focused on uh, one of our pools on uh, the kind of upper beat, uh -huh. uh, which can produce uh, kind of numbers of fish for us. Uh, but there was only the one road uh, fishing on our uh, upper beat yesterday. So kind of add that, focused up on the top beat. Uh, with that, it involved a, a wee bit of the darker side of salmon fishing. That's uh, spinning. Okay. Yeah. Right, you got to do what you got to do. You well, got to keep those num to numbers up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get a result. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice setup you're working with here. Uh, yeah. Once the wind starts to blow, uh -huh. then I, I feel like I could maybe have a little bit, a bit heavier weight. But for most of my fishing, it's good. That's perfect. So moving into afternoon for yourself, uh, Robert, we'll be off uh, the kind of right hand banking here. Um, I'll talk you through how to get down into here, but what I would like for you to do is you can see that obvious kind of ball right there on the edge of the banking, uh, Robert. Yeah. That's how we're going to start. That's your start position just there. Okay. And then slow but sure, you're working down through the nice feature of uh, the kind of croys. I'll get uh, the other rods out to their kind of pools and then I'll come in and see you over on that side because uh, there's quite a lot to go at on that side yet again. But just as you know, in case of perseverance. Yes, thank <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah, just wait for the stars to align, eh? Exactly, yeah, yeah. We're done. We're fishless, but we're done. Take us home. Lead us back. Go on. Where's the van? Oh well, River T. You've defeated us this time. Till we meet again, River T. Till we meet again. Oh. That's it, I'm done. Oh, can't do any more. Oh, it's time to drive home. Oh my lord. Oh, goodness me, Carl. Oh, goodness me. I'm absolutely goosed like, absolutely goosed. I didn't need my salmon handling gauntlets as it turns out. I haven't needed them all yet. When will I ever need them? Oh, it's nice to get out of the weirdas. So all that's left now is to go home. Now this jacket here has served me really well as a fishing jacket, but um, Unfortunately, it means that I can't really wear it as my good jacket anymore. So I'm trying to come up with a solution. So a dedicated fishing jacket from now on. And then here, we've got my other jacket. Ah. Oh, this one's all, this one's all puffy. Ah, oh, nice. There we are, ready for the road. So with regards to tackle, my 13 and a half foot rod actually covered most of the water here, so can't be unhappy with that. I have got a Skagit line that I brought with me um, and that I intended to practice with because I thought that might give me a bit more distance if I needed it. 
but because I never got a chance to practice with it before I came, I um, I felt a bit reticent about getting it out and using it for the first time, just in case it went wrong. But I'll certainly try that. So the plan was, I mean, obviously a big river like the Tay, you would be advised to fish a 15 footer. Um, I would like to get a 15 foot rod, but I'm quite particular. So I have had a go of a Hardy Zenith, the original Hardy Zenith, 15 foot one, uh, 10 weight, and that's what I want. Because I cast it, I liked it so much. And um, I sort of feel like I don't want to buy another rod because I want, I want to get that one. So until I can find that, I'm probably just going to stick with what I've got. Um, the only thing is with are like hen's teeth to get a hold of, so it's proven really difficult. They don't seem to be um, available second hand. That's obviously because people like them so much, they just keep holding them. But if one does come on the market, um, I'm certainly interested. So if anybody out there has got a, uh, a Hardy Zenith 15 foot one 10 weight that they want to, uh, they want to sell on, well, there's a home for it here.